folks, Travis Fox here with FoxOptic.com. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use the ballistic calculator found inside of Pulsar Stream Vision application. Uh, you're going to find this tool very useful to help you figure out additional yardages once you've completed your one shot zero on your Pulsar devices such as Trail, uh, the new Thermion, um, and or like the DigiSight, the new DigiSight Ultra. So basically what this is going to allow you to do, um, you've already, like in the case of this, it's a Browning A-Bolt 25-06. I've already completed a one-shot zero process in it at 200 yards, so I've got zero coordinates. I'm going to use the ballistic calculator to figure out the corresponding yardages that I may want to shoot at, which is going to allow me to input those come-ups in there very quick from that known origin point which is going to allow me to pre-program say for example 100 you know 300 400 500 yards into this scope can be very useful save you a lot of time so I'm going to go through how to put it into the scope in another video so today I'm just going to key on showing you how to set up your ballistic calculator and how it functions so let's get started I've got a pad recorder going here uh, I want to make sure that I've got it recording we're going to go ahead and get it started so I'll get it starting up here and as soon as it's going, so now I've got it going, we're going to get onto this. You can see I'm already into the stream vision application. So we're going to go ahead and hit on ballistics. We're going to add a new preset, which is basically to start a new profile. We're going to come in here under this tab for bullets and ammunition. We're going to come under bullets. We're going to select our manufacturer. So in the case of this uh, shell, I'm using a Hornady 117 grain 25-06. So I'm coming in under caliber and selecting 25. Mine's not the SST, but the ballistic coefficient's the same. I've already looked that up on their website. So I am going to go ahead and select that. That should get me the data I need. The ballistic coefficient, I'm going to click on here. It's got a, a 0.391 ballistic coefficient, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, enter those, that data there, tell it OK. Uh, the ballistic profile that I'm using on those coordinates is a G1, so we're going to select that. Uh, down below that, you can see our muzzle velocity, so muzzle velocity is in feet per second. And it's 2990, so I'm going to back this off and put in 2990. And as you can see, above and below that, it still says 3214 and 3216. I'm going to click right in the middle of my 2990 input, and that's going to lock that into position. If you don't do that, it's not going to change that. So make sure you know that. I'm going to tell it OK. Um, I'm not going to set a spin drift, so we're ready to go to the next thing. So up here in the top right, I'm going to hit Next. I'm going to set my sight height. Uh, the sight height. So, so I want to show you here real quick what the sight height is. The sight height is going to be from the center of the bore up to the middle of the optic. So we're going to need to take a measurement from the middle of here up to here. I usually use a set of calipers, but you can use a tape measure. In the case of this particular scope, it's going to be 1, 1.75 inches. So I've switched that to inches. We're going to come in here and change this to our 1.75. We're going to tell it OK. Our zero range in the case of this particular setup was in yards and it was 200. So we're going to tell it that. Again, got to click in the middle of that to get it to take that uh, value. And then the, the click values, I want to touch on that with you real quick. The click value, so the XM50, or like in the case of this Thermion, the click value, you're going to find that in the specification, is 7 millimeters at 100 meters. So if you do the math on that, that ends up coming out to about a, about a quarter, you know, the 7 millimeters is going to be real close to a quarter inch at 100 yards or a quarter MOA. So we're going to use quarter MOA. Just know if you're using different devices, the field of views are going to affect those uh, reticle shifts. So like in the case of uh, XM38, I think that ends up being closer to 10th milliradian. So just know that you'll, you'll want for different, you know, different devices, you're going to use different inputs. 
So let's go back over here to the calculator. And again, that stuff is in the unit specifications. If you have any questions, you can call and ask me about that. But let's jump back over here. So we're going to change this click value in the case of this one. It's in uh, quarter MOA value. So we're going to tell it that. So again, we're going to come in here and hit next. It's going to ask us our outdoor uh, temperature at the time of zero. So we can come in here like I know the day that I did this, it was uh, about 85 degrees. Guess I'm going to have to scroll on that one. I can't just quick input it. So we'll go up here to 85 degrees and we're going to tell it OK. Uh, barometric pressure is real close to that. It was, I think it was around uh, 30 inches of mercury. So uh, humidity was maybe just a little bit higher. We can, we can put that in as 60. Again, click in the middle, tell it OK. So now we're going to go ahead and hit, and hit Next. Um, it's asking us for a naming, so we're going to call this a Browning uh, 25 Ot 6 200 and then 117. And I think that'll be good, so we're going to go ahead and save that. Now that we've got that, and you can see it's down here, it's the lowest one in here, is the one that we just created. We're going to click inside of that. And you can see our overview. We're going to double check all our information. So it says that it's an SST uh, 391 ballistic coefficient, or excuse me, yeah, ballistic coefficient with the G1 ballistic profile, 2990 on the foot per second, uh, 1.75 inch overbore sight height, 200 yard initial zero range, quarter MOA click values, and the temperature input data is where I had it. So we're going to tell it to calculate. And so here we are inside the calculator, and what I want to show you here is, so, so now it's showing me down here in the lower right hand corner, it's showing me my drop in the MOA based on the input. So you can see here, it's showing me, at a, so it's set the distance up here at 100. Let's change this to yards. So we're going to jump this up to yards. We're going to back this off and call it 100, click in the middle, tell it OK. So now at 100 yards, you can see where it's saying that we're going to need to make a down adjust of 1.35 MOA. So basically what's going on there is at the 100, our bullet hasn't hit its apex yet. It's still coming up, so it's hitting high, and it's telling us we need to make a down adjust in the bullet, which is actually going to be an up adjust in, in the scope itself. So what I want to show you next here is if I were just to click on the screen, over here where it says with the 1.35 MOA, we can see where I can tell this to what would that equate to in click value. So in click value, it's telling me that I need to make a down, a bullet down, five adjust. So if you look at the little uh, yellow inset in the middle of the, my reticle, you can't really tell on this one because it's so close, but it's actually telling me, you know, it's kind of giving you a visual that you need to go slightly above center. So in this particular case, you know, if my unit coordinates, let's, and I'm just throwing you a raw coordinate in there, if my unit coordinate on my y-axis was 10, I'm going to take that, or I'm going to take that up to 15. So I'm going to physically move the reticle up to compensate for that rise, which is going to have me shift in the front of my barrel down to compensate. So let's, let's go in and we'll take a look at another distance in here. Uh, so again, I'm going to click on that distance, and let's just take a look so I can, like, better show you this. So let's input 500 yards. Again, we're going to click in the middle of that and at that 500 yard move, now what you can see is going on here is that it's showing me in click adjustments. Now I want to make from my origin start point. I want to be very clear on this. This is not from zero zero. It's from the origin start of that 200 yard zero. It's telling me that I would want to make an up bullet adjustment of 31 clicks, which is going to be moving my reticle from origin. So again, you know, I, I can't remember what I told you there, but if I was at 10, you know, on my Y coordinate, in this particular case, if I was on 10 plus 10, I'm going to move down to zero, which is going to be a 10 unit move down, and then I'm going to move down an additional 21 clicks, so I'm going to end up at negative 21 Y. 
in order to make that click adjustment for the thing. And it's, it may sound a little complicated, but you'll see when I show you inside the scope how easy it really is. Just know that the ballistic calculator is really slick. Um, in the case of this, you can see where you can also enter an angle. You would get that information uh, from the rangefinder that you're using. So if it's giving you a degree angle to target, you can enter that and it will help you com compensate. So if you're at a higher elevation point than the target you're shooting at, you know, you're going to get some skewing there and your bullet impacts are going to be uh, physically a little higher so you know you're gonna have to compensate for that uh, wind same way you know wind speed obvious and wind direction the wind direction reads out in degrees uh, so whatever direction you know that wind is emanating from you're gonna get a rough approximation so like true north is gonna be zero and then you're gonna start going in a circle from true north so you know if you had a due east wind it's gonna be uh, what sitting over there at 90 degrees a due west wind is gonna be uh, 180 plus and I about 270 degrees over there uh, so long story short you can you can know how that adjust is um, and then again like the wind speed one thing I will tell you is on the wind speed and I can show you that in here uh, wind speed is going to give you meters a second or feet per second uh, no if your wind speed readouts like if you're taking data from you know if you don't have a cast roll and you're taking rough data from uh, you know like a, a weather app or something like that and it's giving it to you in miles per hour uh, you're gonna have to take that times I think it's 1.466 will convert that into feet per second for you so a lot of good useful information in here the table is gonna give you the ability obviously if you open that up you can change um, the different parameters in there and look at it in a table format so like in the case of here you'll see where they're going 0 to 700 meter, or 750 meters and the steps is actually telling you your unit increments between uh, the readouts so like they're starting off at 0 and then going 50 meter increments in between you can see that over in the table on the right and then it's telling you the corresponding relationship for each one uh, it allows you to put the information in and get a bunch of presets all at once that's really handy if you're doing what I'm going to show you later on, putting the information into the scope so you can pull all this data from one spot. One thing I will tell you, at this point in time, I've been muddling with this a little bit, and it seems to be pretty accurate and work well in meters. Um, I'm getting a little bit of weirdness and some rounding issues, uh, like when you're switching it to yardage, like maybe it's not working exactly right. So I don't know if that is or isn't an issue or if I'm just doing something wrong there, but... You know, the, the specified section is what I've been using. It's very accurate. I've been checking it. I run, uh, you know, Hornady's ballistic calculator specifically for that ammunition, and I found the specified comes out basically identical. The only difference is some small uh, roundings, but I am getting some erroneous stuff in that table readout. It's almost like it's not switching from yards to meters. So, you know, um, so I'll have another video behind this that is going to explain how to take this data and put it inside your scope. Uh, so be sure to check that one out. Again, if you have any questions at all, give me a call toll-free, 877-806-2977. You can check all these products are available. You can check them out on our, on our website, which is www.foxoptic.com. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.